Hi, Heather here. It's about to get easier to create a new list and choose your view. Soon you won't have to create a standard list and then go through the extra steps to customize the view. You will be able to save time by choosing your view up front. Let's jump right in and navigate to the Lists app. I am currently on the Microsoft 365 homepage. If you don't have Lists in your left-hand navigation menu, you can go to the upper left corner and click on the app launcher, which is affectionately known as the waffle icon. A box will open up showing you all of the applications that you have access to. And for me, lists is towards the bottom. And this is going to open up the list standalone app. Of course, you can create lists from several different places, but it's easier to start in a central location. At the top of the page, you will see the create new button. And this is where the changes are coming in. At the time that I'm creating this video, this new start page is in preview, so you might not see it yet. If you're in the older version, you will see the option to create a blank traditional list, import from Excel, CSV, or an existing list. The new interface will allow you to choose your favored view up front from forms, gallery, calendar, or board view. Now, don't worry if you've already created a list and you want to have one of these different views. At the end of the video, I will show you where you can do that. The newest option is the form view. This is useful when the intent of the list is to gather data from other people. I don't know about you, but I have found it difficult to get people to fill in the data correctly on a traditional list. The form is easier for those not familiar with how you structure your data. For this first view, I'm gonna walk through the creation steps. First, you need to give your list a title. Then you have the create in, and it always defaults to my lists. What that does is it associates the list with your OneDrive, and you will be the only one who can see the list unless you go in and start adding other people and giving them permission. If this list needs to be viewed by multiple people who are part of a group or a SharePoint site, you need to click the drop down next to my lists to see everything that you have access to and then choose the option that best fits your business process. Then go to the bottom right corner of the floating dialog box and click create. The dialog box will change to a form builder experience. You are basically creating list columns, but making them look like a Microsoft form. You will give the form, which is a view, a name. It can be different or the same as the list name. If you like, you can further customize the form by adding a logo and uploading an image from your computer. Because this is still lists in the background, the first column is always called title and is a single line of text. You can change the name of the column, but not the column type. And for those of you who use Power Automate to extract list data, the underlying name is still title. In this example, we are creating a time off request. So the first column will be employee name. Then when you click add new field, you'll see a pop-up that includes the different options that you can use in lists. So for this example, date and time would be appropriate. When you're creating your form, you can toggle the required button on in the bottom right corner of the question box to make sure that people don't skip providing mandatory information. I want to draw your attention to the right hand side of the dialog box where we now have a few questions. All of them are showing on the form by default, but you can remove the check mark next to any question so that you can keep some data private, such as the approval status on this particular form. When you're ready, you can click send form on the right hand side to get a copy link that you can provide to your target audience. You can also click preview to see what the form will look like for the people receiving it and submit some test answers. And then when you're done, you can click the X at the top right corner of the floating dialog box. This will take you, the list owner, to a traditional list view, but if you want to modify the form, you can click Forms in the toolbar towards the top center of the screen, and then you'll see a card representing your view. You can get a link from here, and you can modify the view if necessary. 
we're going to navigate back to the Microsoft Lists homepage and look at a different view. This time we will choose Gallery. The gallery style puts images front and center. Each list item looks like a tile instead of a traditional line item. A common use I see for this style of list is asset tracking. I've seen many IT departments use it to attach photos of computers, printers, etc. One person I consulted with uses the gallery list to manage a housing project and puts in pictures of available units. The next view that we're going to look at is the calendar view. It's just as you would expect. When your data contains a date column, you can view the list as a calendar. A common use case for this is tracking tasks that need to be completed at a specific time. In this use case, we're tracking an example where I need to publish some content. Now this could be training guides or social media or news items for your organization, really anything that you can think of that has a target date assigned to it. One thing I wanna point out is that the start date and the end date can be two different dates, and if they are, the item you put on the calendar will span across multiple dates. If you only put one date, it will show up as a single event on a specific date. The last option we're going to look at is board view. And what this does is it creates vertical columns and then each item on the list is represented as a card that you can drag and drop into the different columns. The most common scenario I see for this is when you are tracking something through a process flow. Each column you create is called a bucket. So I'm going to quickly create a few buckets that will represent unassigned tasks moving from in progress all the way to published. Microsoft has added a couple of sample tasks and when you create them, you have a couple of choices here to give it a, a name. And then when you click on board choice, it'll allow you to choose which bucket it should go into you can leave this blank, and one of the key features of using a board view is that you can take the task and drag it to the individual buckets as your item moves through the process. I also wanna point out that even though the sample only has two pieces of information, you can customize this to add additional options. The other thing that I want to acknowledge is a lot of people will say at this point in time, this looks a lot like Planner, why don't I just use Planner? And that is totally an option based on what makes sense for you. But the reason the board view is nice in lists is because when you're in Planner, you have specified fields that you can use and you cannot customize them where in lists, you can create different fields to track additional data. So it gives you a little more flexibility. Now, as promised, we're going to talk about how to modify a list you've already created. So I'm going to open one of my older lists that is tracking a bunch of Microsoft change data. In this example, a board view based on this status column would help me organize this information. So if you go to the upper right hand corner and click on add view, you'll see the same choices we had on the start screen for calendar, gallery, and board. I just need to give the view a name and then I will select board. Then you need to choose how to organize the board and this view only works if you have a choice column. So in this case, I have one and that's status. Once I click create, you'll see that the information has gone from being a traditional table style view to different columns based on the status. Now I chose this example because I wanted you to see that a board view doesn't always have to be a process flow. If you wanted a different view, you could go back to the right corner and click add view and you will see the option for calendar and gallery as well. However, the forms view is in a different location. To find that option, I'd like to draw your attention back up to the toolbar at the top of the screen and towards the center, you will find the forms option. And that's it. Now you have the basic information that you need to start working with different views and lists, whether you have the new experience or you're still on the traditional list experience. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.